Hello everybody, my name is Bumi Goldson. I want to show you how to solve the 5x5 five five Rubik's Cube using only one algorithm. Now when I say algorithm, I mean you know, technically any move you make on a Rubik's Cube is considered an algorithm. What I'm referring to is a long list of moves that you just follow blindly without actually knowing why you're doing what you're doing, but it makes the cube end up a certain way. I think that's what most people mean when they refer to an algorithm on a Rubik's Cube. Um, we're going to be doing the following the reductionist method, which is you turn the cube into what is effectively a 3x3 three three cube, and then you just solve it regularly as you would a regular 3x3 three three cube. So the steps that you might find online are to first get the middle nine colors, um, and then to line up the edges to make them into these bars that are the same color consistently. and. Most people can do that, and they once they understand the, the, the way to do it, the method, the process, they can do it, and they can think about it, figure it out intuitively, they think about it, and they figure it out, um, and they can solve the top four edges and the bottom four edges, and then the remaining four vertical edges, uh, most people can figure out the two of them, turn a little bit harder than the other ones, but it's still easy to figure out, and the last two, many people get stuck, and they turn to a long list of algorithms um, I've seen, let's say, like 12 or something like that, based on all the different permutations that you may come across, how to solve the rest of them. So uh, I've seen different things online where people suggested ways that you really can get those numbers down, and you just may have to do it a few times. You can do the whole thing with maybe just three algorithms or two algorithms. So I found that really you can do it with just one. So I want to show you what I think I discovered, um, and we're just going to do all we're going to need to know is one algorithm. The one algorithm that you're going to need to know is the one that takes a checkered edge. I'm gonna display it on the screen now, what the algorithm is, and this shows you how to fix the ch a checkered edge to make it all straight. Um, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is how to avoid the other algorithms so that all you need to do is remember that just this one and you'll be able to solve the cube. What my method is, is it's the idea of having three incorrect edges and solving them all at once. So I'm going to show you first what is the most ideal case. So most people can get top four edges and the bottom four edges, right? And then of the remaining four edges, most people can do two. But we're going to do, we're going to start off with only one of them complete, where you have three of them that are still wrong. So here's one, two, and three. So the first thing that I do is I bring up the third edge to the front, okay? Without messing up the side edges. That was not an algorithm. That was just a simple move right from here, one, two, three, and I wanted to bring this one up to the front, right like this, up to the front and the top, so that the three incorrect edges are in a upside down U shape. And this is just so that I can see what's going on and figure out what I need to do. This is the most ideal setup, and this we can solve in one step. I don't mean one move, I mean in one, you'll see, in a series of moves that are pretty simple to follow. So in this case, we have um, we have, let's see, blue and yellow, the two together that are correct, and one that's incorrect, that's the green and white. And up here we have the orange, two orange and yellows, and one blue yellow. And the side we have two white and greens, and one orange and yellow. Okay, so here are three incorrect edges, two are together, two are together, two are together. And these are little cubies that are together, and one from each one is in the wrong spot. So here, for example, this white green needs to be over here. Uh, this orange yellow needs to be up here and this blue yellow needs to be down here So the first thing we're going to do is is of the two edges that are in the front There's always going to be at least in this case uh, One that can match up right away. So in this case, it's the one that's going to go with the green white It can go over to the to the right side and complete the white and green edge. So let's bring that over and Pay attention when you do this to which QB moved away here. It was the orange and yellow cubic moves away. That means when we, after we bring this edge up to the top and we bring the other one down and we bring this cubic back in order to fix up the, the, the inside layers that we messed up, the orange yellow one is going to come back and we want it to complete the orange yellow edge. So when we bring down this orange yellow edge, make sure that we bring it down in a way that this little orange yellow cubic completes the edge. So how do we do that? We want this edge over here to be 
two, the orange and yellow ones here, and the other, the third one up here. So that would be, that means we'd have to bring this edge over to the right and bring it down. So when we put this green white edge up, and when we replace it with this orange yellow, it will come down in the correct manner. So let's go ahead and do that. Move that up, move the green yellow into that one's place, bring that down, and now when we complete this edge by bringing the orange yellow back, right, bring it back, not only did we complete this edge, not only did we have that first edge that we did complete, but also the third edge also gets complete. All three edges get completed at the same time. Now this case that we just did was the most ideal, and this is one state, and we're going to have a little bit more complicated cases, but this is the case that we're always trying to get to. Now we may have, a, we may have to do this two or three times to, to be able to complete it like this. So let me just show you um, a case which is slightly less ideal. So let's go back to the beginning. In this case, we had two here, two here, and two here, right? We brought this green-white up, and we were able to bring the green, the green, the, or the yellow, orange down in a way that when we returned the QB, it was able to complete the edge. But we were, it was convenient because it came down the right way. But what if it was the other way around? What if this edge here, the orange-yellow that had two together, was facing the other way? In other words, if it was mirrored from right to left. So let's take this setup. Here, everything is the same except the orange yellow is facing the wrong way. So now, when we start from the beginning, we take the white and green and we make that edge. Now, if we were to just send it up over here on the right and bring the orange yellow in, now when it comes down, it's gonna be upside down. We're gonna have the yellow orange gonna be at the top, but we don't want it at the top because that's where the returning QB is coming from. He's coming out at the top. So we need to bring this one down in a way that the wrong, the third one that's wrong is coming down over here. So it means that we need to basically bring this edge down in one shot. So that means when we put the orange white one up, we want to put the orange white one up in this spot. And then when, meaning in other words, you want to take this yellow orange, put it somewhere else on the top layer, bring the white green up, and then bring the orange yellow back so we can bring it down turning the front face clockwise, so it'll end up with the third piece on the top. So let's move it off of this spot over here. Then we bring the white green up into that spot. And now when we return it here, and now we can bring back the front face clockwise, so now the orange yellow edge is in the right way. Now when we bring back that third QB, it's all complete, he's complete, the white green is complete, and the whole cube is now turned into a 3x3 three three cube. Okay, here's another setup, which is a one-step deal. We have two that are the same on the edge, but now they're on the outside. And the middle one is the one that is the odd man now. The top edge again, we have two on the outside that are the same, one in the middle different, and again, two on the outside and one middle. This one is the same idea. You just connect any edge. So in this case, let's say the white green, we bring it over to the white green edge, bring it in. And then we send it up and we bring the other edge into that place, bring it down and put it back in. And now that those edges are all complete. Now, the, the way that I have the cube set up now is that it happens to be that the edges are solved. Many times that we're doing this, we're not concerned if it ends up being a checkered pattern because we're gonna do the algorithm to take care of the checkered pattern. But the point is, is that you look at the two that are the same and it makes no difference if they're checkered or not. In other words, if you see a yellow orange next to a yellow orange, even if one of the cubies is reversed the other way, so that the orange is on this side and the yellow is on this side, that doesn't bother us. Because as long as we can get it to where all the colors are the same, all the edges are on the same edge, then we can do the uncheckering pattern, which I showed you in the beginning. Sometimes you'll find situations where it will be a little bit different, and you're gonna have to do what we just did two or three times. So let me show you a few examples where you would have to do two steps. Here's a setup where the three edges, all of each of the three cubies within each edge are spread out among the three edges. So for example, we have the orange yellow, orange yellow, orange yellow. We have the white green, white green, and white green. And we have the yellow blue, yellow blue, and yellow blue. And they're all spread out among the three edges. So here we need to do what we just did two times. That means we need to first connect two cubies together. So let's do, for example, this one. We bring over the blue, yellow, blue, yellow. We sent over the white, green, which means that we want to make sure that when we bring down white, green, it's going to connect two of them. And not only that, 
we want to make sure, see, we, don't, we, we could technically do it on either side of this edge. We could make sure that it returns to this side or this side. Either way, the two white greens will be together. But when this edge comes down, one of its cubies is going to go back to this edge. And we want to make sure that this third one also gets the two next to each other correct and the one different. So in that case, if we brought down this top edge so that the blue yellow is at the bottom, that will mean that the blue yellow is going to the left. And that will be three incorrect. And we don't want that. We want two the same, two the same, and two the same on each cube. Rather, we'd want to bring down the orange yellow to be at the bottom so that when it moves to this side, we'll have two orange yellows together, and then all three edges will have the same pattern. So in this situation, that would mean just moving up the right edge up and replacing it with the third edge, the top edge, so that now it comes down with the orange yellow at the bottom, which is what we want. And now when we return the, the, the layer, we now see and bring back our other edge to the front, and we'll see that we have now two together, two together, and two together. And just like we did in the first time, we would now connect um, the white and green to this side, send it up, bring down the edge so that the third one is at the top, and the three will all be soft. Um, let's do another scenario where we have to do two two-step solving. Okay, here we have a setup where we have two edges, two cubies, one edge that has two together the same, two together the same, and one of them that's all three. It's mixed up from all three edges. Okay, so the white green's here, white green, and white green, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, and orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow. So what do we do over here? So we have to think about it. We, again, what we want to do is we want to create the third edge has to be two together. So how can we do that? Well. Since the bottom one here is a white green and the uh, bottom one here is a white green, either one can go on either side of this middle white green and it will create a two uh, cubies together. But we just want to make sure that it doesn't complete one of the other edges because we want three incorrect edges at the same time. Right? That was the, to get back to that ideal uh, state. So let's move. Let's see what would happen here. If we move this one over here, does it make a difference? So the point is like this, if we move this one over here, and we don't want to bring down this edge in a way that the blue yellow is going to be at the bottom because then it will complete the left edge. We don't want the left edge completed, we want two correct and one wrong. So if we're going to bring this piece over here to the right, we have to make sure not to bring down the blue yellow to the bottom, which in this case is actually not going to happen. If we just move up the right edge up straight up, and replace it with this edge, and then bring it down, so now, the blue yellow is at the top. So now when we complete the bottom layer, we return the bottom layer, we have the bottom layer is two edges correct, one wrong. Two correct, one wrong. And bring the, the other edge, you'll see again, is two and one wrong. And we're back to the ideal state. It happens to be that they're, they're not aligned. There's two are at the top and these are at the bottom. So you have to turn one of these upside down. The way to do that is to um, bring it up here, and then slide it in here, and then bring it down. Right? So that's very easy. Uh, the only problem is, is that before you bring it over, you're going to end up, you're going to have to turn this face, you're going to mess up this edge here. So you have to prevent that, preempt that by rotating it first. And now when you bring it in, and then you return the front face, so now the two edges are the same. You want the two edges that are next to each other to be the same. You want them to be consistent. You want either the top both to be the same, top both the same, or the bottom ones. And then you go ahead and complete it the way we did it before. Until now, we're talking about where you have three edges. Sometimes when you're solving the edges, you, you do the top four layers, you do the bottom, bottom four layers, and you're trying to get to what I said, which is only to solve one edge, but you'll find that it'll end up happening by accident that you have already solved two of them. So you're only going to have two edges that are incorrect, which is actually the case which most of the algorithms deal with, is when you have only two edges that are incorrect. So let me show you an example of that. So in this example, I have now uh, one edge, two edges, I only have two edges that are wrong. I have the, the orange yellow, orange yellow, and the orange yellow. And I have the green white, green white, and green white. Everything else is solved. So what I need to do over here is I have to create three wrong edges. So the way to do it, one way to do it would be to, for example, if I brought this white one over to this side over here, so now this edge is effectively the same. It's just again, two white greens together. 
And then when I bring back the other QB, when I bring one of the other edges down, I will now have a third edge, which is incorrect. So let's do that. Let's move this one over here. Okay. And just set it up. Doesn't make a difference which edge we bring down. And now when we bring return this QB, we now have one edge here incorrect, one edge here incorrect, and the other one wherever it ended up, it was back here, bring to the front. And now we have the three and we're back to the ideal case. Okay? Okay, and that's it. And I, once I figured out this trick, uh, I was ne I never came across a situation where I needed to use more than that one algorithm. If you found this video helpful for you, please share it with others. Thank you.